Hello, my darlings. This is a Shinzo X Reader fanfiction. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. As a matter of fact, this one is more on the cute side. I'm not good with the cute stuff. I'm more uh, the guy that writes drama, so I hope this is all right. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, but before we dive right into the story, please remember to uh, check out my merch store and my Patreon. Both links are down in the description. Uh, yes, once again, I'm asking you for financial support. Anyways, um, if you don't have any money to spare, that is completely fine, understandable. Uh, in that case, I would just simply ask you to like and or dislike the video, comment something down below, watch the video until the end, and hit the bell icon if you think uh, I'm worth it. Uh, and lastly, I've gotten this really lovely fan art from Dragon Fox, and they drew themselves as a darling. Now, this is actually a really adorable idea, and uh, yeah, let's just let's just make it canon. Subscribe to me and join the beautiful Darling Doll Army. Enjoy the show. You and Shinsu were a couple. How it happened, you couldn't really tell. It just happened one day. You and him were alone in the classroom of general studies. Despite you being a 1A Hero Core student, you and Shinsu had become friends during the school tournament. You helped him out during the race. No questions or answers required. So it was somewhat of a shock to you when you learned what he could do with his quirk. Despite that, however, you felt a certain attraction to the purple-haired boy. So the following weeks, you tried to remain somewhat close to him. You tried to make it look like coincidence whenever you two met in the hallway or at lunch. In actuality, you just remembered his schedule. You were just too shy to ask him out. And what if he would reject you? All these thoughts were running through your head, putting you on edge. And then, one day, he just approached you. You weren't even following him that day. He had scratched the back of his neck and gave you a soft smile and just asked, Wanna go on a date? Your blush was redder than Santa Claus's coat, and you immediately agreed. But this is also where your trust issues began. You didn't know if he had activated his quirk to go on this date with you, after agreeing. What if all you did to him was loot stuff while you were under the impression of being at school with him? Because his quirk did something to screw up your brain. How did he actually control it? Could he turn it off? You silently laughed in your head. You were the creepy one at the start of this. You had actually gotten your way, but now had cold feet. Right now he was reading for your math homework. While you were gulping down soda you borrowed from the cafeteria. Food wasn't allowed to be consumed outside of the cafeteria and the outside of school grounds to avoid nasty stains. But if it weren't for this pink liquid, you highly doubted you would get the necessary determination to work for your stupid papers. You always had a problem when it came to numbers and you two had decided to do homework together after school was over. The way he was reading over your work, with this intense glare of his, yet incredibly soft smile, made your heart jump. Suddenly his smile got wider and he spoke up. You have made a mistake in question 3b. He followed up with a chuckle. Who's your math teacher again? Whoever it is, hates all of you. I mean, this is really difficult stuff. He scratched his chin. There was a light, prickling noise. He must have forgotten to shave this morning. Like, one of my pals has a really useful quirk, but it isn't anything cool. 
Basically, his quirk allows him to deduct passwords and the like, to basically hash and code everything. And he got some, not all, of the school plans for our class and this stuff here. He chuckled again, out of sheer absurdity of what he was seeing here. This stuff won't appear for us until mid-second year. Wait. Was he giving you this anecdote so you wouldn't really answer his question yet still be able to answer his question? It's Vlad King, so yeah, I guess he has a bias against 1A. Oh, it could be just that we have harder stuff. For a millisecond his smile twitched and his breath hitched. What was he thinking? Shinzo sighed and handed you the paper. The answer is one. You blinked a few times, trying to process what he just said. <laughs> I know it's really dumb, considering most answers on that sheet are really long. It's a trick question in a way, since you have this really long path of reaching it. Of course it would be easier with a calculator, but the ones we are allowed to use in our first year would probably have problems with this too. He chuckled again. God, why was he so dreamy and smart? You two returned to your separate homework, and for a while you heard nothing but his soft breathing, the scratching of your pens, and the occasional student screaming outside. After all, school was technically over. Eventually you found yourself looking at him again after he stopped writing for about six seconds. Shinzo was suckling on his pen, a questioning look on his face. He didn't notice you staring, or if he did, he didn't mind. After another minute, you finally managed to pull your face away from his and looked at his papers. Creative writing really wasn't a strong suit. He had the tendency to think of the ending first, but had no idea how to actually get there. After a few minutes that felt like hours to him and mere seconds for you, he finally spoke up. You have been staring for a while now, he pointed out. Want my help? You said with a cheery smile. Knock yourself out, was his only reply. He had written a decently length short story. And at about the halfway mark, it became obvious where he was going with the ending. But to get there, he would need to go completely out of character for both the love interest and the main character. As well as add convenient magic and curses, which didn't make sense. Oh, Jesus. You mumbled out loud by accident. I know, it's not good. You shook your head. The first half was decent, and at point brilliant, just his ending idea was really stupid. Can I rewrite a few things? Also, I know where you're going with this ending, and it's just some edgy bullshit. Doesn't fit a love story at all. He raised an eyebrow. Well, fix it then. <laughs> he chuckled. For a second, your face turned into a frown before going back into a smile. You turned the piece of paper on its side and ripped it straight in half. Shinzo didn't say anything, yet, but sweat began to form on his forehead. Then you began copying the first half of the story on your own sheet, trying to mimic his perfect handwriting to as good as your ability as possible. With a curious look he oversaw you writing. He chuckled a few times at jokes you were putting in, and outright wowed when you put in a plot twist. By the end of the story, your hand heard, and you let out a deep sigh of relief. You looked at your boyfriend. His eyes were watery. You know, do you know my quirk? You said with a smug smile, and he shook his head. <laughs> Emotional manipulation. I got in on recommendation because my quirk isn't directly offensive and I would definitely would have failed the physical exam. Anyways, 
In writing, what every emotion I want the reader to feel, I can grant. Meaning I could for example write uh, people who are holding hostages a message which literally doesn't say anything outside of hello, hello, hello. But to them, I could make them so sad that they just start crying and crying, allowing for easy capture of course. But it's not that powerful just yet. He smiled. So you used your own quirk on me. Shinzo's smile deepened when he heard your reply. Maybe. But this would at least guarantee you an A plus on this. He sighed. <laughs> I love you. You felt your body warm up. He said it often. Because as he said himself, he isn't good with emotions and he feels as if he constantly needs to remind you, just in case he starts acting distant without noticing it himself. You look deep into his lavender-colored eyes and replied, I love you too. And slowly, you two came closer and closer. He stopped mere centimeters away from your lips. Answer is question of actions, so we're both 100% sure you do this on your own accord. You blinked and realized what he meant. And then you closed the distance. His lips were soft and warm and your mind was filled with the smell of the strawberry deodorant he loved to use. A small moan escaped him, and his hands found themselves on your shoulders, and he was rubbing soft circles into your neck.